Hello everybody and welcome back. Here are my top 5 picks for processors under 10,000 rupees. So before we start, the links to all the processors will be down in the description so you can check the pricing, availability and a little more information if you want to. So starting right off, the first processor that I've picked is the Intel Core i3-6100. Now yes, you can definitely hate on Intel for the fact that they only give you teeny tiny upgrades on every new level. But you cannot deny the fact that under 10,000 rupees, Intel is the only one offering processors with DDR4 support and new architectures. On the lines of the 6100, the second processor that I've picked is the Intel Core i3-6098P. So this is like a younger brother to the 6100. It has almost the same specs, however the built-in graphics of the processor are not as strong. However, this is actually perfect for gaming, because you're going to be using a discrete graphics card anyways. So the built-in graphics card of the processor don't matter that much, that means you can save some money on the processor and invest a little more on the graphics card. Coming to the AMD side, the third pick on our list is the AMD FX6300. Now this is a 6-core processor, sure it's a little old and it only has DDR3 support, but even by today's standards, it's a pretty strong processor and can still do you well if you decide to buy it. Coming a little bit to the lower range of the processors, you can go with the AMD FX4300. So obviously it's not a quad-core that can match up to the standards of the Intel. But nonetheless, if you still want a quad-core processor and you are on an absolute budget, this can be a great option for you. And my last pick in this range is the AMD A8-7600. So this is an APU. So if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of money and you can't actually afford a graphics card and a processor, an APU might be the way to go. And this is one of the best APUs that you can buy in this budget. So those are my 5 picks. However, I do want to give an honorable mention to the Intel 4th generation processors. So sure, that's an older generation processor. But like I said, Intel doesn't give you a lot of upgrades on the every new processor that comes out. However, if you're going backwards, that's actually an advantage because if you look at the 4150 or the 4130, 4160, they're still great processors even by today's standards. So if you decide to pick up one of those as well, you still might be happy with what you get. Alright, so that was pretty much it guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Comment and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. Share it with a friend who you think would benefit from this. And definitely do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.